Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Anna Zalewska-Janowska and I have the honor of presenting today's uh, lecture on COVID-19 and related stress on urticaria patients. This presentation is specially recording because of urticaria day, the very day where urticaria patients are in the center of attention of the medical health providers, society, policymakers, and everybody. First, I would like to present uh, the outline of my lecture. Uh, I would like to say a few sentences on biopsychosocial challenge, um, which COVID-19 actually executed on us, representative of Homo sapiens in the 21st century. Then I would like to mention uh, a, a few data on uh, literature, uh, on research, um, focused on urticaria patients and stress and uh, COVID-19 concerned stress. Um, then I would like to share with you um, some thoughts about stress, what is that, and how to cope with stress. So, what coping with stress strategies we could execute, we could choose um, as urticaria patients and also as, as uh, medical health providers in order to guarantee or to uh, enhance satisfaction of the patients and prevent burnout syndrome development in medical health providers. And uh, I, I, will, I will share with you, as I've already told you, my favorite ones. But of course, it's a very individual uh, situation and everybody is encouraged to think about uh, the personal, the personal prescription, so-called the personal uh, approach to cope with stress. And then I would like to focus on the importance of education and spreading reliable information on uh, stress and preventing and of preventing stress um, um, reaction development and coping with stress strategies. And then I will share with you um, short emergency anti-stress intervention. Uh, in order you could prepare your own prescription. And I will finish off with taking home messages. So, COVID-19. COVID-19 really executed a highly biopsychosocial challenge for all of us. On the very day, on the 11th of March last year, uh, World Health Organization announced pandemia of SARS-CoV-2 virus um, all over the world. As we all know, this situation executed a lot of life losses, serious health problems, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, lockdowns, unemployment problems, uh, problems with uh, um, possibility of uh, consulting uh, medical health providers, uh, family practitioners, specialists. A lot of problems and a lot of uh, problems worldwide. COVID-19 and urticaria patients. Mm. Shan and co-workers published a very important paper on loss of income and the researchers found that actually urticaria activity uh, based on frequency of wheels and each intensity was dose dependent as regards loss of income. And you know, each is especially 
um, troublesome symptom. Patients, people scratch to bleed in order to get rid or, or get rid of this uh, unpleasant sensation because pain which develops after scratching itching places it's much more bearable than itch. Another very important study by Bezatz and co-workers uh, demonstrated that fear of COVID-19 and anxiety, depression symptoms, and, and actually stress, um, which was um, executed on, on, on the uh, urticaria patients, uh, really have extremely significant impact on mental health and activity of urticaria. And even of those patients, of those urticaria patients who are not infected, but the fear of, of, of being infected or, or the close family created all the unpleasant sensations and actually very um, important, very um, significant uh, psychological symptoms like anxiety and depression. Um, a few group of researchers demonstrated also highly negative impact of chronic spontaneous urticaria patients concerning control of disease activity, uh, access to uh, medical health providers, access to health system, access to uh, new therapeutic um, agents, which really created a lot of problems. Shall we concentrate now a little bit on what actually stress is and what are anti-stress strategies? Stress to me could be regarded as actually all stimuli that cause loss of balance of our organism. Sometimes, of course, we, we, we do not um, even notice that we are under different challenges, so it means stressors. However, if there is too much stress, some symptoms, mostly negative, develop. And we should remember that life without stress is actually not existent. Stress means evolution, means progress as well, but too much is not good, just like as not enough. So balance, different level of stress for everybody. And I would like to point out that also positive situations could cause stress, so loss of balance. For example, wedding. For bride and bridegroom, uh, such celebrities, uh, such a situation, it's, it's, it's the vast majority of cases very positive, but also is stressful. Very often, brides present with herpes simplex, which ac uh, activates uh, itself under stress condition. And of course, negative influence of, of stress, it's much more acceptable and um, observed because if there are negative uh, situations, um, something, sometimes we are uh, um, uh, agitated, we are, um, we, we are in a fear situation, we are anxious, uh, we are also under stress and the same symptoms could develop. Like, for example, headaches, stomach aches, uh, um, different, uh, different uh, aches, uh, of, for example, aches of the spinal cord, uh, or, um, of course, a higher blood pressure, um, and, and uh, heart beat rate accelerates. So, what are the stress, anti stress strategies? Anti-stress strategies, they're all activities that allow us to cope with stress. And later in this presentation, I will focus on a 
few strategies who are very uh, adaptive. We also have to mention at this stage that, that stress management techniques of all kinds reduce inflammation, which is very important, especially in chronic diseases patients and chronic urticaria patients. So this is extremely important. And stress management techniques reduce neurogenic inflammation. Shall we now concentrate on the connection between skin and nervous system, so the brain? Skin and brain are actually from the same part of the embryo by origin, and they are very, very similar in reaction. So, for example, when we are under stress, and we think about stress as a, for example, um, in, uh, some bacteria, viruses, allergens, uh, which are on our skin, so, and especially when our skin is a little bit disturbed or is inflamed, so it's much more sensitive to environmental stresses. And in the epidermis, so in the outer layer of the skin, they are the nerve endings. And in the outer layer of the skin, there are no blood vessels, no lymphatic vessels, but they are nerve endings. And those nerve endings convey impulses to the brain and back to the skin. So, actually, neurogenic inflammation can develop. And such inflammation worsens also uh, urticaria lesions and can trigger or worsen urticaria development. We should also remember that skin is a visible organ and we, as a representative of Homo sapiens, uh, are social creatures. And skin lesions, visibility of the skin lesions, are very stigmatizing. So functioning of the patient could be impaired. So what to do? Research data and clinical observations demonstrated that good communication between patients and their medical health providers, uh, mutual um, elaboration of treatment plan, cooperation, really leads to better satisfaction of the patients, better outcome of the disease, better handling of the disease, acceptance of the disease, and also prevents burnout syndrome development in medical health providers. We should remember that we as patients and we as medical team members are representatives of the same gender, the same uh, homo sapiens. And in order to help others, we should be in a good shape ourselves. And absolutely, we should execute the no-no policy to the blind leading the blind. Remember, then, when we are on the plane, there is also, there's always at the beginning, uh, before takeoff, there's an announcement as regards oxygen masks. And it's always said that first we should put oxygen mask on ourselves, then on our children. What does it mean? Children are much more important for us than ourselves. But in order to help others, in order to help our beloved ones, in order to help our patients, we should be in a good shape ourselves on the first place. So we should take care of ourselves in order to serve better our patients. I would like to 
demonstrate our relaxation room in the Department of Psychodermatology of the Medical University of Lodz, Poland, and to my PhD student, um, you, you, you have in our background a, a nice uh, a view of the forest, so it's nature, and then um, armchair, uh, uh, which nicely messages uh, uh, different muscles, and there is a, a hanging, uh, um, swinging uh, chair. And another uh, part of, of the room, the, and there is a nice fireplace, and um, there is a fountain that actually the person uh, who is um, tired uh, and would like to relax can use on an everyday basis. Then shall we uh, switch to actually my favorite coping with stress strategies, um, which are quite, shall I say, um, ubiquitous to, to the homo sapiens, but of course, um, uh, different things can serve different people. See, first, positive reinterpretation. When something, what does that mean? When something uh, um, negative happens to me, uh, I am always trying to look at it as a um, glass half full. So what does that mean? That actually, you know, all the negative things could be uh, transformed as a challenge, not a crisis stuff. And actually, um, until it is something uh, which is actually not reversible, so eternal stuff, cannot be discussed. But all the other things could be and should be treated as a positive stuff. So even in a negative situation, I'm trying always to find something positive that really adds is an added value. Of course, it takes time. And I do not advise to execute the strategy and practices at the very beginning when we are in a really very, very difficult situation, a very challenging one. Rather, in order to start practicing this um, coping with stress strategy, it's good to think about something that happened in the past. What we thought at first about the situation, how troublesome it was, and how we changed our approach to the situation later. The second, my favorite, coping strategy is support group. Actually, support groups is, is an extremely powerful uh, coping with stress strategy because we are social creatures. So we love to have somebody, sometimes could be an animal, to be a supporter. We can say something, we can touch somebody and it truly really helps. We can say, we can communicate and support group, it's extremely powerful. And then comes optimism. Um, research data demonstrated that actually Homo sapiens function, functions better when there's on a little bit of the optimistic side of, 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 of the line. So actually, approaches uh, different um, things with a note of optimism and does not always say, oh no, it will be, no, not, I won't do that, I won't gain that, I am, I am pessimistic. But of course, optimism should be based on preparation and really not being such a, an empty optimist. And last but not least, the physical exercises. Actually, there's a lot of literature data showing that physical exercises, but of course, balanced and apt and for individual, not too highly uh, intensive, are very good also for cognitive uh, features of the Homo sapiens and actually um, serves very well 
as coping with stress strategies, such a catharsis stuff. And my life motto is help others and do not forget about yourself at the same time. What we can say about education? As we already seen during the pandemia, and that information, reliable information, education plays enormous role in being balanced. So actually, we should remember that all the environment, everything which is around us could be challenging to us. And especially we should remember about so-called environmental stresses, changes in temperature, humidity, pollution, allergies, bacteria, and so on and so on. Of course, psychological stress as well. That everybody has an individual threshold of being put out of the balance. But remember that when we take care of ourselves and our close relatives, we support each other, we have good sleep, we take care of ourselves, our threshold of stress could be higher. And it is nothing innovative to say that we as uh, human beings and representative of Homo sapiens, we are one entity, Soma and Psyche together. As already father of medicine, Hippocrates, was announcing. Nothing changed till today. And then I would like to share with you um, a few photographs of myself and actually lots, um, um, lots uh, uh, newspaper. Um, and here you've got a boxing, me boxing a little bit. Uh, uh, and this in Polish, but still uh, 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 coping with stress strategies. It means, you know, physical exercises, a little bit of boxing. And we, ha we have actually um, a, a little room uh, with boxing equipment in order to get rid of stress and don't uh, um, harm ourselves and anybody else, of course. And in here, in, in Polish, you, ha you, you, ha you have a, 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 a sentence which I really love, that only peace can save us. You know, I, I, I repeat to myself sometimes this phrase, uh, and you know, uh, uh, quite often my brain takes it for granted uh, and actually uh, uh, stress hormones and, uh, and, and, and heart rate and blood pressure goes down uh, slowly. So I feel better. And another close up. So shall we go to forget me not issues? I would like to share with you my emergency kit, anti-stress ABC. When I am sad, frustrated or angry, I am trying to implement um, this uh, uh, points you have in here. Of course, not always uh, I'm able to do that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. What matters is to self-monitor stressful situation and uh, just to think about that and implement. For example, standing up or sitting, closing eyes, trying to count, breathing slowly, and imagining a pleasant situation allows the brain to be occupied with something pleasant, something physiologically positive, as regards relaxation, of course, and get rid of stressful situation. It means stressful physiological um, um, symptoms better. We should remember that our um, reaction, fight or flight, which was extremely important when we 
as Homo sapiens were um, inhabitants of caves um, ages ago was extremely important because it allowed us to survive, to escape from, um, from um, uh, uh, predators. But nowadays, we don't have really animal predators chasing us. But in a stressful situation, we very often or almost always stimulate the same reaction, which is actually not a very positive in the vast majority of cases. Shall we now practice a little breathing exercise? Breathing, it's a physiological, absolutely physiological response and crucial for life. So may I ask you kindly to sit down comfortably or stand up and secure your back against the wall, whatever you wish. Comfortably sit down, it's me. And then, could you close your eyes? And could you slowly breathe in? And even slower, you be so kind and repeat this two or three times but remember slowly breathe in and even slower breathe out you can breathe out through your mouth Definitely breathing in should be done through the nose. And then please do open your eyes. Better? It's only a few seconds, but you know, this allows our organism to slow down the increased heart rate and slowly blood pressure which was actually triggered by a stressor is going down and it's very physiological it's nothing magical it's healthy thank you for cooperation shall we finish off with taking home messages. Psychosocial support is of key importance next to biological or medical professional help to our eticaria patients. Actually, to all of us. Psychosocial creatures. We are psychosocial homo sapiens. And satisfaction in patients and medical team is only possible when all the parties take a proper care of themselves. So from the biological, medical point of view and also psychosocial one. So in order to help others, first we should take care of ourselves. Thank you for your kindness, attention, and all the best for you day. Eticaria day, the very day for eticaria patients, their families, medical health providers, policy makers, and the whole society. Thank you.